Hi everyone, my name is Bassoon Dan, professional bassoon player and former professor of music at the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Why'd you do it, Anakin? Not the youngling. <laughs> Sorry about the Christmas tree. I uh, haven't had time to take it down yet, but this is actually important to today's lesson. Vibrato. You know the thing that violin players do? You know the, the Italian hand signal, right? But they do it on the string? That's vibrato. Or if you're listening to a singer sing and you can hear the waves, that's vibrato. What's so hard about vibrato? <laughs> you take your sound, do, and you add a little bit of mmm, do, and that's it. Thank you all for watching. Take care. Now, some instruments do use vibrato and some instruments don't use vibrato. Now, the whole purpose of vibrato is to show tone maturity in someone's playing. It's also to hide the fact that you're not in tune. Now, usually most wind players, once they reach a certain level, are told, hey, so that, that sound you're playing, hey, so that, that, that's, that sound you're playing, yeah? Can, can you, you know, just, a little bit of that? Yeah, perfect. Thanks. There's usually not a whole lot of clarity that comes to this, especially as a bassoon player. Now because of that, I want to go out of my way and make an in-depth video on how I practice vibrato. Please note, this is just how I personally practice vibrato. There are plenty of ways you can practice it, this is just how I do it. I'm also using Kristen Wolf Jensen's method of practicing vibrato. She has her own video explaining it that's way more professional than how I'm going to do it. So if you're ever interested in that, give it a watch. All right, here we go! Ow! Now, the key to playing any wind instrument is having a proper foundation of sound. Usually, whenever we breathe, we breathe in through our nose, and into our lung thingies. But for optimal wind playing, you would want to breathe in through your mouth and you're gonna send all of your air past your lungs and all the way down to the gut. Take your hands, you're gonna put them to your side right beneath the rib cage. Take a deep breath in and see how far you can push your air down beneath your lungs. If you're doing this correctly, you should feel your gut push against your hands outward. Now. Notice that when I do this, my chest is not moving. This is the proper way to breathe for any wind instrument. Don't be afraid of the gut. Unbutton those pants and let that thing out. This is a judgment-free zone. We're only here to get better. Now, once you've established that, it's time to take it backwards and revisit the holidays for the next step. Now, keeping your hands beneath the rib cage, you're going to take a deep breath in, push those hands out, and when you breathe out this time, you're going to do your best Santa Claus impression and say, Ho, ho, ho. Now, when you do this, you should feel your gut move with every syllable. That movement that you felt in your gut, that term is called diaphragmatic pulsations. But that's way too long. I'm gonna shorten the term down to hose. You know, for Christmas, you're gonna turn on your metronome to 60 beats per minute. The first step is that we wanna get these hoes in time. Right now, we wanna aim for one hoe per beat, or quarter note equals one hoe. Ho, 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 ho. Now, it is real important that we do not stop our air in between each hoe. Once you have that down, Let's add it to the instrument. So before we add the hose to our sound, we need to be in tune first. You can vibrato all you want, but if you're not in tune, it's like decorating your Christmas tree without setting up the tree. Again? Now, for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using your band director's favorite metronome tuner app, Tonal Energy Tuner. If you don't have this app, go buy it. Go borrow your parents' credit card or something. It's five dollars. You've probably spent more on a boba milk tea thing. This will help you forever. The reason why I'm using this app is because it has this really fancy analysis tool thing that we're gonna use for our vibrato. The green line means you're in tune. If you're above the line, you're sharp. If you're below the line, you're flat. We're going to hold out the C until it's in tune. 
once you're able to get that C in tune, slowly start adding the hose to the sound. <laughs> Now, notice when I do this, I'm pushing my pitch all the way up and all the way back down, but it never goes below our green line. This is important because if we go too far down, one, it'll cause our vibrato to be really wide, and number two, it'll cause our pitch to be unsteady as we don't have a home base to return to. We wanna really exaggerate, really overdo how large these hoes are going to be. Note, you will never have to vibrato this wide. You'll get seasick. There are two things I wanna focus on. Flexibility of pitch. How far up can you go? How far down can you go? And number two is consistency. Are all of these hoes the same height? If you're doing this correctly, they should look like little Christmas trees. Ah, yeah, you see what I'm doing? See, tree. You could do this exercise on D, F, A flat, whatever. No matter what note you choose to start with, you cannot let the hose affect the pitches. Okay, so once you've managed to get one hoe per beat, we're gonna double that to two hoes per beat, or subdividing eighth notes. When I switch from quarter note to eighth note vibrato, the height of our hose got cut in half. This is because if you're doing this correctly, you will not have enough time to go all the way up and all the way back down. There is just no time for that. Also, because of our shorter height here for our hose, we're a lot more in tune. This is important. A good vibrato is characterized by being both in tune with clear and precise subdivisions. If this is your first time doing vibrato or first time implementing vibrato, I would stick with one to two hoes per beat. Stick with that, get that consistent and in tune, and you'll be good. But if you're more advanced and you think you can handle more hoes, you can do three hoes per beat and four hoes per beat. Why not? If this is too easy for you, you could do more than just four hoes per beat. You can do five hoes, seven, nine, 21, 33 and a half, etc. This exercise can actually be done with any wind instrument. As long as you're in tune and you got consistent subdivisions, you should be okay. Now, what I just described to you was an exercise that gives you the ability to do vibrato. But how do you use it in context then? Should I vibrato everything in eighth notes? Should I vibrato everything in sixteenth notes? Should I vibrato notes? triplets, quarter notes? Should I do uh, uh, five notes? second notes? Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't look at a piece of music and go, Okay, so on this half note, I'm gonna vibrato eighth notes. And then on this one, I'm gonna switch it to triplets. Yeah, that'll be it. Now, this is okay if you're just first learning vibrato, but you don't want it to sound systematic. A true vibrato is unmetered. It is any and all subdivisions in between this and this. I wanna give you a few do's and don'ts for vibrato if you're first learning this. Number one, vibrato faster when you're playing louder or higher on the instrument. Number two, vibrato slower if you are playing softer or lower on the instrument. And number three, don't vibrato on any technical passages. Besides that, there aren't any real rules on how to use vibrato. No two performers are going to have the exact same vibrato. Maria Callas' vibrato is different from Yo-Yo Ma's vibrato. And that's okay! Using vibrato is like, well, Decorating a Christmas tree. There is no correct way of decorating a tree. Of course, you need a tree and you need ornaments, but decorating the tree is entirely up to you. 
The artist. Okay, so how would you decorate a Christmas tree? You look at other Christmas trees. Ooh, I like this. I'm gonna do this. Ooh, I don't like that. I don't want that. This is a crime against humanity. As an artist, you are allowed to use vibrato in any way that you see fit. Listen to some of your favorite artists and see how they incorporate vibrato. It doesn't even necessarily have to be classical music. It could be jazz, it could be opera, it could be pop, whatever. Pick out what you like, pick out what you don't like, and see which one enhances your own performance. But you gotta practice first. As famous classical musician Ludacris once said, hoes are your friends, hoes are your enemies, with hoe energy to do what you do. Look, it's still Christmas, tree, haha, uh -huh. look, shirt, look, it's Santa Claus. Follow these steps and you'll be a master at vibrato in no time. Like and subscribe if you wanna see any more of these educational videos. Oh hey, would you look at the time? It's time to practice. Hey there, thank you all for watching. If you wanna watch another educational video, here's a video of me explaining the tenor clef. If you wanna hear Christmas music, click on this video. I'm waiting. Look, if you're not gonna do that, at least practice or something. Just click the video already.